The next hour on board the ship were in dead silence as the two kings carefully read the short history of the Sol system. Both men had faces white with shock at the events that unfolded during that time. Edward remained in silent contemplation, while Taurus paced with concern. Marcus, on the other hand, was growing frustrated minute by minute, with Arcturus having to do most of the work. All three girls were crowding around him, hounding him with questions and asking what button does what thing. Marcus, having three barely clothed women surrounding him, tried his best to answer what he could, with as polite a demeanor as he could muster. It was even worse now than it was before, owing to the fact all three girls had come across a cargo crate containing a shipment of questionable women's clothing. Okay, where the hell did you get those clothes? Like, seriously? Marcus asked. We've found them in the cargo hold, of course. You have some neat stuff in there, Jacqueline said with a sly grin as she adjusted a tie on her new bikini. Okay, from now on, Please ask if you can take anything from there. I do run a cargo route as a merchant on the side. Some of that stuff in there does not belong to me. Please, next time, just ask. Marcus scolded the three with a scowl. All three said, sorry, and blushed, embarrassed. We'll put it back, Sarah said. Do not, it's fine. That shipment was abandoned anyway. It's fine, keep, Marcus said holding his hands up to stop Saris from removing what little she was wearing, in this case a set of white lace lingerie, stockings, and garter included. Okay then, I want to try on that cute pink number with the fluffy bunny ears, Ariana said with excitement, and all three girls charged out the door in a giggle fit. Arcturus, electroshock level three, please, Marcus said. As ordered, sir. Arcturus replied, then mechanically cringed as he sent a 400-volt electrical shock through poor Marcus's body. Oh, God, that's ow! That's ow! Ow! Marcus collected his thoughts and waited a bit. Sorry, Ark, I know you feel it too. It's quite all right, sir. I'm starting to understand your frustrations. Ark responded in kind. Press X to doubt. Any news from the net? Marcus said with a sigh. A new starship has entered the system. It has yet to disengage FTL procedures and start transmitting data. It appears to be a Citadel-class battlecruiser, Arcturus replied, displaying blurry images from a surveillance satellite. Oh, okay then. Sooner than expected. And a Citadel-class, no less. That's interesting. What are the Templars doing here? Marcus asked. No ident details as of yet, sir. We'll take about two hours, Ark said. All right, then. Have you figured out what the interference was during startup scans yet? Marcus asked. Yes, sir, Ark said, displaying some data as Taurus walked in the cockpit. The interference seems to come from the thing called magic. It interferes with our sensors to an extent. I have filtered out most of the frequencies and am performing deep scans with the Ion Satcom network. It is difficult. Translations will take more time than expected. What's that, then? Taurus asked as he stood by Marcus. Magic interferes or compromises my electronics network. It's how I was lied to when I came here. Every planet is scanned with a complex satellite network to see if it is inhabited or habitable. Interference from magic stopped that from happening properly. Im, very slowly fixing that issue, he replied in kind. Oh, I see, what does this scan do? It lets me know things. It's basically like getting a magnifying glass and taking a really, really, really good look at something for a very long time, many, many times over until you understand everything about it. A scan is just that, but really fast and really detailed. I can tell what kind of rocks are in the mountains, what kind of pollutants are in the water, what kinds of animals, and how many are in your forests. I can even go so far as to be able to tell everything you've had for breakfast for the last ten years. Marcus replied with a sly grin. Oh, wow. Information that shall be translated into your language and handed over freely. What to make of it is basically your problem, but hey, you can make use of it in due time, Marcus said. Well, I'm sure it will be very useful. Do you actually want to study magic, Taurus asked? Well, it would be interesting to try to understand, I suppose. I doubt I can actually do any of it, but cataloging it would be a start. At the very least, I can use it to adapt my sensor arrays and circuitry so it doesn't flip out anymore. Marcus shrugged and closed the displays, resuming his flying. I shall see if I can get a mage of decent standing to join you then. 
Has to be of decent quality, of course. I think I know. Snow elves. They are the best mages in the kingdoms. I can think of a few names of note, Taurus said as he scratched his chin thoughtfully. Well, I guess we will see soon. We're on the final approach, Marcus said and got back into piloting his craft. The mountain loomed in front of the ship, a minimum of Everest's size and scope, with an entire city carved into the side of its southern face. Dozens of blimps, dirigibles, and aircraft of varying sizes buzzed around the local area, dwarfed by Marcus's frigate that had to engage in minor maneuvers to avoid hitting a few of them. The sight of the massive beast appearing out of the clouds into the open from the east took a few ships by surprise. The frigate's weapons array on display made a few others suddenly start wearing brown pants. And there may be. Docking arms there for airships. Let's hope it's stable. It should be. Granite that was carved from the mountain, then strengthened by magic. Usually the big ones are used to house multiple airships, but there does not seem to be too much traffic. Should be able to just slip right in. Taurus said as he pointed towards one of three large docks. Let's see. Cut main thrusters, set to RCS, redirect to 40%. Marcus idly spoke to himself as he completed a checklist. I shall join Edward on the platform for the welcoming party. Please don't be too long in joining us, Taurus said in an authoritative tone. Okie dokie. Taurus nodded and returned to the ship's airlocks. His retinue was already waiting, as was Edward's. The ship rocked with a thud, indicating it was docked up and the airlock opened with a hiss. With a number of guardsmen and curious onlookers already waiting for them, the two men regarded each other. Two guards front, one in back, the king in the middle. Taurus made his way down first, followed by Edward. The guardsmen on duty on the docks holstered their bows or sheathed blades, yelling to send for the ambassadors. With the situation calmed down somewhat, Curious bystanders and wanderers began to flock to the dock to look at the frigate. The shock of the moment quickly gave way to a state of blissful awe as the mechanically inclined elves got more and more interested at the sight of the strangely ornate warship. Within minutes, the mountain elf rulers arrived and greeted the royal retinue in person. Taurus, this is, well, unexpected, the mountain elf king said. Indeed it is, Valerian, indeed it is, but a most auspicious one. This is for the moot that I called. We have much to say and little time in which to say it. I figured we could use our guest as a taxi to speed up the process. Come quick, we have much to discuss, Taurus replied as Edward approached with a grin. Eddie! A tiny, cute voice suddenly pierced through the air as a small mountain elf girl pounded out of nowhere into Edward's arms. My goodness, there's my little goddaughter, I missed you. Edward said as he hugged the child. The crowd of soldiers dispersed back to their stations and kept the royal retinue under guard. This was the moment Marcus started the cargo ramp, and the assembled crowd let out a collective gasp of shock as a stack of gold and silver appeared in front of them. Proudly sitting on top of this stack of cash was Marcus, who casually wandered away and started directing paladins and officers to gather the treasure and put it in the vaults. Marcus approached one of the snow elf paladins and handed him a clipboard. Sign here, please, Marcus said. The shock of the ridiculous situation caught him off guard, and he had no idea what to do. How would one respond to a situation like this anyway? Without any recourse or anything, the elf just signed it and handed it back. Cool, we'll deliver your share of the treasure when I'm done here. Read this letter, it will explain everything, Marcus said, handing him a sealed envelope. The elf just fake smiled, then ran as fast as he could towards the Grand Hall. Marcus was very cautious, very nervous, especially with this being an entire kingdom full of Jacqueline-type elves. The crowd kept its distance, however, fully recognizing the fact that this ship was very heavily armed, and its weapons were actively tracking people who were getting too close. Edward and Taurus disappeared into the kingdom's halls, and Marcus simply started handing out his food packages or offloading them, setting them aside at the dock master's direction. A half an hour passed by, and the royal retinue had begun to filter out of their chambers. This was the first time Marcus saw a snow elf, fair-skinned, white-haired elves with a slightly more muscular build than their fellows. One such snow elf, the court head magister spotted Marcus, and with ridiculous speed, she charged forward, grabbed him, and stared directly into his eyes. 
She remained as such for a solid minute. Marcus, however, had enough and broke the clutch, sending her away. He tilted his head and cricked his neck in annoyance. Why? Marcus simply said, glaring at her. It's an actual human. This shit is real, she yelled. She... The assembled crowd gasped in horror at the utterance of a curse word from the head mage. Especially for her, this was highly abnormal. Yeah, I am human. Could you respect personal space, please? Jesus. Marcus shrugged and walked back on board the ship in a huff, swearing in Spanish as he walked. She gathered herself and bowed her head in shame as her king came closer to her. And that was... I needed to see into his soul for a bit. There is no doubt, she replied. Well, of course he's human. We can see a... No, he's been through hell. I saw that sparkle in his eyes. His appearance betrays him. Those are the eyes of a grizzled veteran, not a spunky youngster. I think these new humans are immortal, somehow, she said. This statement caught everyone off guard, and they had to look at Marcus for a minute or two afterwards. The subject in question returned down the boarding ramp, holding several tablets, and handed one to the Snow Elf King, then the other to Valerian. Read it, Marcus ordered sharply and stood aside to welcome the party to the ship. We have a three-hour flight back to the factory. Plenty of time for you to discuss matters. In the meantime, er, you, come here. Marcus gestured to one of the nearby soldiers. The elf in question, one of the snow elf paladins on guard at the docks, pointed at himself, then walked forward. Cool, see that? Marcus said, gesturing to the rapidly lowering cargo ramp, once again stacked with treasure. He nodded in response. Good, see that? Marcus said, and gestured to the large cargo drone that was now on fast approach. Yes, sir, the soldier replied. Good, load that, Marcus pointed at the treasure. Into that thing there, he pointed to the transport vehicle. Then get inside it and it will take you home. That's yours now. Follow these directions when you get back and give this letter here to your treasurer or financier or whatever his or her title is, Marcus said and handed him two letters. Yes, sir, the soldier said with a salute and waved for help as the small cargo carrier drone landed on the dock. Marcus walked towards the Snow Elf King and handed him a letter as well. Come on, get in. We don't have much time. My reinforcements have already arrived. The Snow Elf King simply presented his hand. Lucius. Marcus, pleasure to meet you, Marcus said with a smile and showed everyone inside. With all said and done, everyone of relevance entered the ship, settled into their cabins, and began to explore the ship. Julius settled into the library with almost unnatural speed. Taurus set up shop in the Arboretum, while Edward joined Jacqueline in exploring the cargo hold. Valerian began to talk to Arcturus in the ship's computer core, having a heated debate on the qualities of cheese. Marcus, on the other hand, was back to being annoyed as his new apprentice and the magister were now with him in the cockpit. The snow elf girl stood over him with a smile, her clothing a better alternative to her fellows but still nowhere near enough to be considered modest, at least by Marcus's standards. She had already introduced herself as Tamara. The magister was closer to him, enamored with him, her mage robes leaving almost nothing to the imagination. Marcus sighed and started up the ship's intercom. Would all of the females on board the ship please report to the bridge? I have a question to ask you. Marcus's voice echoed through the halls. All the ladies on board hastily went out of their seats and escorted by two paladins made their way into the ship's bridge. Marcus left the cockpit and took a look at the women arrayed in front of him, flanked by two soldiers. Okay then, why? Marcus said, gesturing wildly with his hands at the women. Why what? Saris asked. Why do all the women on this fucking planet walk around naked? Marcus loudly, frustratingly bellowed. The ladies looked at each other, then themselves, and said, almost in unison, We're not naked! Marcus facepalmed and yelled, Yes, you are! That one is wearing the equivalent of a leopard print miniskirt and tank top. No panties, no bra, either. Those three are wearing Victoria's secret premium catalog stuff, too. That's lingerie. You! What even is that? A robe? It's not covering anything. The only one who's even vaguely sensibly dressed is Queen Valencia, and even that is pushing it. Seriously, why? The group looked at each other in confusion. Please tell me, please. This is becoming very frustrating, Marcus begged. 
We don't really understand it, but it's all to do with magic. When a girl, um, becomes a woman, magic starts to affect her body as much as nature does, Lucius said as he appeared on the bridge. When she reaches a certain age, her, um, womanliness gets augmented by magicka more and more. Skin becomes more sensitive and whatnot. Around the age of, if I remember correctly, compared to humans, around 25 or so, the magicka within a girl's body stabilizes and she gets more comfortable. Eventually she calms down, so to speak. So if she can wear plate mail at this point in her life, why is she in a bikini? Marcus yelled. Well, I like being comfortable, don't you? A girl just gets used to it after a while and the boys don't really seem to care. Saris replied in kind. On the contrary, my dear, we love it. The world always needs more beautiful things anyway, Lucia said with a sly smile and left the bridge. Marcus breathed deeply and cradled his head in his tired hands. To think it's only been 16 hours, he yelled in frustration. Okay then, okay then, Marcus yelled to himself and got back into his pilot's seat. Ladies and gents, please hold on to your pants. We're making a little detour. There's something I gotta know, he said as the ship lurched forward.